Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. How's it going? It's good to see everybody. Uh, so, faces today, this is super cool. I always kind of enjoy this. Um, I'm Matt German Prey, if you're curious how to say my last name. I see a silent at the end. So, if you've been mangling it for years, I don't take offense. <laughs> it's totally cool, okay. But. Uh, so I'm a faculty member uh, at the University of Nebraska Omaha in the College of Information Science and Technology. And I'm here to kind of kick off Chaos Con in North America. I think this is our second Chaos Con, right? We have one in Europe. We also have one in Chaos. Uh, so a few logistics. So I think um, backwards down the hall that way by the Coke machine. Okay. Uh, and then don't forget. If you haven't seen, the, there's a new chaos mailing list. So the mailing list was set up originally prior to chaos being formed. So it had kind of a weird name. And so we've officially moved to chaos at lists.linuxfoundation.org. OK, so if you have questions, just let me know. But Georg has been sending out emails to the list, wherever Georg is. So anyway, uh, make sure you sign up for that. Uh, we have a lot of talks today. There's also the board here on the right is for Viking talks, which will be in this room. I'm not entirely sure when, but they'll be in this room. So if there's a, a topic that you want to talk about, just go ahead and put your name up on the board. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Good. Okay. Gary, I mentioned the list. Thank Viking you. Talks. Perfect. Good. All good. All right. Everybody good. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this you know, will be about a 15-minute presentation. I'm going to talk a little bit about community health and kind of what we've been doing over the course of the last year, because it was a year ago that Chaos officially kicked off the, uh, in LA at Open Source Summit North America. It was kind of six months, maybe six months prior to that, that we kind of got involved rolling at the Leadership Summit in Tahoe, but what you're seeing here is it's about eight years worth of So I think we could all like to hope that the open source projects or open source communities that we are part of or work with or our community managers of are all just kind of green fields and they're lovely and right? This is how they It's just wonderful. <laughs> Every morning you wake up and you like kind of looking out at the meadow and kind of working with the people. Yeah, well, I think the reality is right. We, we know that there are are gremlins uh, in these, these green fields. So part of what the chaos community is about is trying to root out, looking under the hood a little bit of the communities and projects that we have and trying to root out what some of those gremlins are. And yes, I did take the time to find a picture of a gremlin. <laughs> 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 that, that is a gremlin. So, so it's pretty pretty shiny though. <laughs> that one doesn't appear to have any problems, <laughs> as far as I can tell, from an external perspective. So we've talked with a lot of people. We've, we've whether it's on the list, whether it's reaching out individually, whether it's at your facilities, whether it's at conferences, and there have been a lot of things that people have been talking about with with community health. So this is clearly an important issue for a number of people as represented by all the folks here. So part of what we're starting to do is, is bring that conversation, hoping to bring that conversation a bit more down to a point. So a couple things that I've kind of taken away from the first year, and I'll kind of walk through these just a little bit for you, um, that we rely on technical resources, right, to understand uh, health and sustainability issues. Uh, but I think there's an assumed skill that people necessarily know how to interpret the information in meaningful ways. That we have the tools to gather the information, and we have the metrics that we are starting to realize that we want to look at, but I think the translation of those into how they're interpreted is it's an assumed skill right now. I think this is something that needs to be to be worked on. I think this is a real challenge. Right? So I think there's a, a bit of a burden that's being put on people to do that interpretation. And I think this kind of ties into the second one. So these people then, there's this assumption that they can take action. 
on that skill. And that's a apparently that's a real hard problem <laughs> to do to take action. So I think this is something that needs to be worked out as well. So again, we can talk about the tools, we can talk about the metrics, but doing the translation through interpretation and then into action is, is also tricky. I do think right now, and I'll really hone in on this, this last one, that these siloed problem solving approaches that we have to understanding and acting on community health kind of is, is limiting the collaboration that can occur that we're hoping to bring together in chaos. So right now, if, if we have kind of these siloed approaches, we lose a lot of cross-domain experience or expertise. As we have, if you just look across the group, we have a lot of cross-domain expertise, lots. Okay? If we stay siloed, we lose a lot of that. Uh, we uh, will then ultimately limit upskilling as a way to think through these complex problems and a way to really drive them to action. So the skills, the upskills will actually then occur still in these silos. I think it's problematic uh, as well. Uh, and then I think this will ultimately lead to inflexible support models. The, this is just all my observations over the course of the year. You can all tell me I'm crazy, which is totally fine. <laughs> actually, this has been solved, I don't know it. Um, but these inflexible support models or these siloed support models will be very complicated as well because then we have to do support kind of one by one, which is really challenging. Um, and then ultimately, I think it, it start, I hear this quite a bit. It's leading us to this. Anybody feeling this one at all? <laughs> we get metrics fatigued, right? And that's really bad. That's super bad. Um, you're all really busy, and if you just continue to pile on more things to take a look at, and you're not really sure how to interpret them and bring them to action, I, I think one of the approaches is just to fail. <laughs> it's just, is it? That's, you know, I mean, you, that's, so I think this is metrics fatigue, and based on kind of smiles in the audience, <laughs> I'm guessing maybe there's some truth to this, right? Um, I don't know, do you break? That last one is this causing people to break. I don't know, maybe that's going too far. Maybe not. All right. But the reality is, right, is that we have this chaos project, and there are a lot of people that care. These are very important issues. And you're all here to address these issues. Um, so I think it's important that we as a group start bringing this down to a, a finer point. Right? Get out of the silos and bring this down to a finer point. I also think then we have a, a task with kind of this last part is also making this work accessible to people who aren't necessarily participating in the CAS project. So I think there's, a, there's another layer of individuals. So you're all here, which is great, but I think there's a, another set of individuals who are going to be consuming the technology and the metrics that aren't necessarily part of these day-to-day -day conversations. So we need to make that, that accessible as well. Right? You're all privy to this here internally. And I'm hoping that this can kind of cure some of the metrics fatigue that we have uh, through the building of a stronger community. I'm going to hone in kind of as my, my second point here on this shared problem solving. Because I think this might be something that can give us some traction. All right, and so building shared problem solving. So I'll introduce a, a concept on this second half here of this talk, which is type three error. So statistically, in statistics, are you familiar with type one and type two error? Do you remember your stats class? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, trust me, there is there is error somewhere. <laughs> somewhere in there back years ago. So there is there are a couple statistical errors. They're called type one and two errors. We have problems in analysis that you're doing. Type three errors are a bit more uh, philosophical than type one and type two errors. Okay, but they're around the same same kind of thing. And this is really what a type three error is. <laughs> right. So I, I think this happens quite often, providing great answers to really just the wrong question altogether. All right. So I think there are a couple reasons why we're running into type 3 error in the metrics space. And one is the streetlight effect. And so this is a lot of these type 3 errors come from a fellow by the name of Roon Rai and Andy Vandeman. So I credit where credit's due. So the streetlight effect is, is gravitating towards easily accessible data sets or easy, easily accessible toolkits um, and not really by the need around a well-formulated question. 
So you, you kind of gravitate towards data sets that you might have. And you start cranking on those data sets, again, providing great answers, but really not to any question that is really resolved, revolving around a problem that you have. All right, so this is streetlight effect. A lot of people do this. I, I'm definitely subject to it. You, you go where the, the light is the brightest. Um, and then the other is, is being solution minded. So you get in a habit of, of really wanting to provide a solution without really honing in on what the problem is at, at first. So you're kind of, it's the horse before the cart type of thing. The, the solution is something that you're hoping to push forward without really articulating the problem behind it. And I think this advances unclear or anecdotal problems or pseudo problems. So we're answering these kind of things. So in order to, to really improve our problem solving, I'll put forward uh, three things. So one is to identify the people who would actually share the same problem as you. The one-off problem over the course of the last year is really tricky. So if we just look at, at a problem that one person has, it's hard for a project or a community to just, just always solve that one problem. So we really have to find shared problems amongst people. That's, that's a challenge, right? So problems are obviously objectively out there, so we can't just assume that there is a problem inherently around community health. I don't know what that objective problem might be. Um, but we have to find out who the people are that share that localized problem with you. So if you, if you have a problem right now, just kind of a food for thought for you, if you have a problem that, that you think metrics can help solve, can you formulate it? <coughs> Call it. Can you form that? Do, do you know who shares that problem with you? It's a good. It's a good exercise. <laughs> that's how you. That's how we start building these shared problems. Finding those people. Um, slow down and, and focus on problem formulation. So, or the, or the question, right? Focus on on the problem formulation. So we just have limited capacity, and I think if we don't focus on Clear problem formulation, we're going to end up producing bias judgments along the way. We're just going to naturally inject bias into the, the, the solutions that we're providing. Okay. So, can, can you elevator pitch? Does that make sense for can, can you provide a really short, concise version of what your problem is? Because if it's a long winded problem, it may not be a great one, it, it may be too far ranging. So, can you really break this down to the problem that you're actually trying to solve? With metrics, and this is a food for thought for yourself, whatever that is. Can you formulate an elevator pitch, two sentences, three sentences, and then do you know the same people who share that problem with you? Good, good series of steps. Uh, and then defer pseudo problems for the time being. If they're really just anecdotal or they're, they're, they're kind of one off problems, they may not be the things that we have to worry about right now. All right? if, again, if we chase just the individual problems all the time, I think we're going to end up spreading very thin, very quickly. Because with the 30 people that are in this room, I bet there, there are 30 individual problems, I would suspect. And, and chasing those down can be pretty tricky, tricky. as a community. Granted, you can do this locally um, within your organization. So does the problem actually have, have roots if they're all kind of related, right? So you kind of slow down, focus on the problem. Does it have roots? I mean, does this problem, is this problem actually shared with other people? What is the problem you're trying to solve? And I think some of the work groups uh, that we have right now are doing this, right? I think they're trying to answer, they're, they're formulating questions, setting question problems are really close together. But they're formulating questions that need to be answered. So the contention is, is that once the problem is formulated, sometimes providing an answer to that is really just a matter of experimental or mathematical skill. If you know the question that you want to ask, if you can really hone in on that question, or you really know the problem that you're trying to answer, sometimes the, the methods of getting there are really just a matter of practice. And some of the concerns, I think we were putting a little bit of the, again, the horse before the cart, that we're putting the mathematical skill of the experimentation up front sometimes. You can all, again, you can all tell me I'm crazy, that I don't know what I'm talking about. This is, I'm just trying to reflect on what I can hear in the person. So, personally, I believe that if we clearly formulate problems, we can help reduce metrics fatigue. 
to think so. I think that's a problem, right? <laughs> that's a problem I would love to solve. I'm putting forward. And then I think if we do this, we can really start to hone in on the gremlins in our green fields, right? We can really start to find out where they are and root them out to some degree to really make your communities perfect <laughs> and lovely every day. Because that's the whole. So that's my pitch, right? I can keep it short and sweet for everybody. I think the conversations here are wonderful for everybody. Um, I do want to give credit, at least for us, here we are funded by the Alfred Sloan Foundation for a lot of the work that we do. So there's the credit there. Have a great day here at Chaos Time, and a lot of talks today. Here we go, talk a little bit about the agenda. We have several talks coming.